Crazy hair. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Texas Tea. You're here back in Houston with my little crazy hair. Look, wild hair. Um, we are back in Houston for a Texas Tea today, which is Tuesday. I hope everything is going well for you, um, wherever you are. As you know, I was in uh, San Francisco last week, so it should be kind of interesting to see how everything goes. And Chris is here. The, the Texas Chris, not the, not the, I'm um, oh, sorry, did I get your table? I did. My bad. Um, <laughs> that was me. This time we have Texas Chris, so see? So what was the difference here? So my friend's name is Chris in San Francisco. I see. So we have West Coast Chris. Okay. And Texas Chris. Chris. Yes. Okay. Now I need like an East Coast Chris. Any is volunteers? Any volunteers? Yeah. Got East Coast Chris there? <laughs> That'd be kind of fun. I can I mean, go no, with all I the Chris's. Born, raised in Virginia. Does that count? Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Virginia is really pretty. Oh, it's pretty. That's a fact. Besides, as everyone in Virginia knows, Virginia is for lovers. Is it? Well, that's what it says on the bumpers. <laughs> I thought that was Paris. Well, that too. Virginia is for lovers. Okay, that's something I've never heard. Okay, so we're going to do... That's the theme that's been running for a long time. No, I never heard that. Is that how we all got here was through Virginia? Yeah. I thought it was through Africa. Oh. <laughs> well, earlier maybe. DNA, right? Well, our mother all came... Our mother, our universal mother, they say came from Africa. Yes, that's true. Is it true? Well, according to what they as well as true. And we're going to try a double time. Ready? Okay. See how well we're doing. <laughs> anyway, so. Welcome to Texas Tea, for those of you that didn't know. Nice to see you. Nice to see everyone. Hello. I'm trying to squish in here to be close enough. It's like, hi, yeah, Chris. Hi. How are you? This week, I know it's been kind of crazy. It's been a strange week. It's great. It's freezing. So it's been a little bit of a strange week. Um, the traveling was kind of strange in a way really? because I, we, you know, I was joking when I was leaving. I was in the San Francisco airport and there was no one, no one in the luggage. Because you know how you come in when they put you, you know, you're going to depart and they drop you off in the luggage, you know, part. There was not even, not even the people who work there. And I got there at like. Eight, six in the morning, which really isn't that early for a flying time. Not for flying time. Mm -mm, there was no one. It was like a ghost town. Wow. It was so strange. And so, um, but on the upper decks, you know, there were people, you know, everyone was doing pretty good. I think everyone's getting like cabin fever and they're ready to, they're ready to get out. You know, they're ready to get out and ready to move. And so there were quite a few people traveling, you know, and we stopped in Vegas on the way back, which, well, they've been talking about it. it has a lot safer to be on airplanes than up, I think. Mm. I don't know. But there, I was reading articles, National Geographic is talking about it. They said that when you're actually flying, when the airplane is actually moving and you have all the air flowing, they said that a large percent of the air is actually recycled from outside the airplane. I didn't, I thought it was all recycled air completely. Well, apparently not. And apparently they also are pushing it through all these HIPAA. Oh, okay. They said the air is actually clear that if you're in a room with other people. Well, I had a whole, like, on the way there, I had a whole road. So on my way to California, I had a whole road to myself. Nice. And then on the way back, I had, like, one other person, and there was, like, a seat between me. But, you know, I didn't really care. I'm not worried about catching anyone's germs. Hot? Mm -mm. No. Why? But before I got on, you know, usually I, what I do as soon as I get home, is I do hydrogen peroxide inhalation therapy where you just boil uh, an inch of water and you put like a capsule of hydrogen peroxide and then you breathe in the steam, yeah. which is what doctors do to um, kill like pathogens and bacteria in the lungs and viruses in the lungs. Oh, it's a very okay. natural way to do it. If yeah. not, you can have a humidifier and do like 50-50 solution. Okay. But that's what I do. And then three days before I leave anywhere, I start taking elderberry and zinc. Okay. And so I just kind of boost up my immune system a little bit. Well, my immune system, one of the things I'm doing is I've been doing, besides the zinc, very, very good, I understand, it's and hard. the vitamin C, is the supplement with vitamin D. Because you're not getting a lot of sunlight, you're probably not getting all the D you need. And apparently D is supposed to help with that side of Oh, yeah. yeah. That it causes in the body. Yeah. Yeah, so sit out in the sun. You know, it's good to, like, get a little sunshine. 
But if you're like a love, you're inside or whatever, you're working, whatever, and you're not out in the sun that much, you may want to supplement. You could supplement for it. Um, you could get all the good stuff. You know? All the good stuff? I think they ought to be coming out with the studies about like apparently what forty percent of people who actually contract the virus have no symptom. I believe that. Symptomatic. I mean, I've heard that figure, but apparently there's no people who actually get this, but they have no symptoms at all. So what is their body doing? That our other bodies are not. They should be looking at that, right? Then it makes yeah. it good logical sense. Mm -hmm. What's going on with their body that they're not showing even symptoms, and other people are dying? We know probably to you, I like, I, don't, I can't speak for anyone else, but in the spa in January, we had someone actually come in from China and I got sick first. And then the woman who owns the spa actually got sick second. And, and, you know, this is what, uh, you know, as, as COVID was coming in and we were like, I was like, should we get tested for COVID? And she's like, yeah. no, no, we're fine, we're fine. Yeah, well, right. then I got like a pop, uh, so they gave me a false negative. So at first they thought I had it, and then I didn't have it. So I thought that was kind of interesting because I didn't, you know, I was like, well. Okay, here's a question. Did they use the little probe up your nose or is it blood? Blood test. Oh. Yeah, so. So, so blood test was bad. So. Right. So and so they when they, because I donate blood, I've been donating blood since, I, for like 20 years, so. Um, Did you know I'm an official turnip? Uh -huh. And passed out after they took the blood. They said, I'm sorry, but you're an official turnip. You can't give blood right now. You can't donate any more blood. Yeah. Well, you know what's funny is this last time that I went to donate blood. Um, cool. oh, yeah. So if you're able, it's a great thing to do. Yeah, for every donation of blood that you give, you actually are saving three people's lives. Really? And so mm -hmm, it wow. saves three people's lives every time you just donate your little pint. It doesn't seem like a lot, but it does it go one way. Um, yes. And sometimes I do double reds, which is when you do. Double red? It's when you're there for longer. So they do double reds out of your body. And then and then if they have burn patients, I'll do plasma. Because I have a rare blood type. I, I can donate to everyone, but I don't have, but I can't receive you're from not, everyone. Uh, you're an O type, right? Yes, but That's I'm not rare. I'm an O negative. I am oh, rare. O negative. I am rare. Ah. But we didn't do that. <laughs> but they think people with O negative genes, what is it, the RHB negative, are like aliens. Well, I, yeah, you read I some of the I holistic think. studies, it's really so funny. In other words, you're outside the United States. We came States. from the stars, apparently. Oh, that no. far. Okay. <laughs> I have so no I idea. I do think it's funny. But um, so when I went to donate, I had been doing like, I've been trying to do, so my family kind of went vegetarian for COVID. And so I was trying to do like the vegan vegetarian thing for like, I'm a meat eater. I like meat. Yeah. So I was a vegetarian a long time ago, but you know, and I can cycle off. I can go off meat and just do vegetables and then I don't have dairy, like whatever. I don't have a problem with that, but I was trying to do the vegetarian thing. So I went to go donate blood and, and she goes, uh, did you change your diet? I was really? like, really? I'm naturally chubby and cute. Like, how yeah. did you know I changed my diet? <laughs> and she said, um, she goes, because your hemoglobin is one point too low to donate blood. I was really? like, one point in the history of me donating blood, I've never had that happen before. And that's what you As, were vegetarian, right? Because I had stopped eating meat. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I guess I wasn't eating. I was eating spinach like every morning. I was choosing. That's a Popeye thing, but yeah, it doesn't actually work work for my iron did not work uh, and so she was like and, and you know normally if it wasn't covid you could go back and donate the next day you like go eat a burger and they come in the next day and you're fine yeah but because of covid they're making people wait 30 days so she's like oh, <laughs> oh so i have to go back so now that i'm back in town okay i need right. some blood well good right. so what have you been up to did you miss me of course. don't lie of course, <laughs> of course. Being polite, see how it is. Four to ten. Just He's four like, to ten. <laughs> yeah, right. Four You're so years. busy. So what are we drinking today? Okay, so this is a tea because you were talking about people having worry warts. Yes. So that is our conversation today, is eliminating your worry wart. So this tea has got a green tea base to it. Smells really good. It has a little peppermint in there. What's the name of it? It's rock and mint with lemon. The so lemon ball is very good for like, you know, smoothing you out, relaxing. Am I going to be transported oh, overseas when I drink it? Yeah. And the green tea is very good. And actually, green tea is good for actually shifting your brain wave from like, well, into and out. Mm. From whatever weird state you 
weird traveling state. I'm still I'm a little jet lagged still, but I still went and swam this morning. Are you still swimming? Oh yeah, I swam like every other day. Are you eating meat? Yes. Okay. I am meat yesterday and I swam. Take your note time according to the eat according to our type. Um, so I hit about. You should be eating rib. Yeah, I hit about fifty laps every other day, oh. and I walk like in between those days. Like I usually do like three miles between those days. So I try to stay up on it, you know, in case we get an invasion from China. We need to be able to run, and I'm not a runner. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a driver. Invasion Give me a fast car, and I'll go. Invasion from <laughs> China. Just I was listening to you know how they have all those people that come from YouTube. <laughs> you know it. <laughs> they they come with their conspiracy theories, you know. Yeah. Some guy was like, "China's coming, China and Russia are coming to Washington in December." When I was a, when I was a kid, it was the Russians November. are coming, the Russians are coming. That's so I've made That's what mine it was. That's how you deflect. Yeah. And you try to make a com- comedic movie. Mm-hmm. The Chinese are coming. The Chinese are coming. Yeah. You don't remember that movie? The we could let, you know, we could just pretend Alcatraz is America. Can we like create that illusion using Hollywood? Sure. I think that would work. And then we just lock them down, right? Of course. See if that old prison will hold up. You know, when I, when I, I was joking, I was like, I was, I was like, I would swim the channel to Alcatraz for charity. That's you exactly the look. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You it's know, only, that's, it's that's, only like two and a half the, miles. That's one of the toughest times in order to swim. I know, everybody the says that, but I don't believe it. And it's really cold water. Hey, the key to swimming at Alcatraz is you cannot start at Alcatraz. You cannot start at Pier 39. You have to go up. You have to go like a mile past. More than a mile. Probably about two and a half miles, start. three. And as you're swimming straight you go that across, way. the current's taking you down. Hopefully, you'll hit the island. Yeah, you'd have to, you'd have to pay me a couple oh, million. I, I would, you know, if you would donate a couple million to charity, I would swim. Do I have to swim to Alcatraz? Can I swim from Alcatraz back to the shore? I think that would be better idea. Right. I'd actually better idea. Yeah, start me up at Alcatraz and I'll swim back to shore. Okay. Yeah. Five you know, million. Who's the charity? Well, you know, there are a lot of prisoners apparently. You know who? When it was actually a prison, mm-hmm. they figured very, very few people ever made it because they all drowned. Once you actually escaped from jumping in a water to swim. Yeah, because the current would take them. So because the current, I was watching a boat. So these fishermen were like on this side, and within like two minutes, they were here. And I was like, oh, you just do scissor kicks and that. See, I'm a, I can float. If I'm like my own life. If you float, you're fine because eventually you end up somewhere. I can just think. I can float other people too. Now, is there? Okay. <laughs> Good point. I don't know because we were on the pier, so I didn't really get to see the the sea line off of pier. Well, there's sea lines. In I would pier choose 39. That's to the jump in the water and try to make it when you're flowing inland. Yeah, that's true. That'd be in the morning. Okay. When that's the fish the, eat. When the fish eat. I think the currents change though. Time of day. Yeah, but you can tell the current moves really fast there, but I still think. Okay. Well, that's just angling. Yeah. I wonder if Michael Phelps was swim with me. Oh, yeah. We Any could day. split a million, Michael, and then we'll give the other four to charity just for surviving this one. I know, I know <laughs> what he would say. He said, okay, you swim it, we'll split it out. <laughs> I'll swim right behind in his wake. Yeah. That would work. Yeah, there you go. He can butterfly it. Oh, my God. That's hard. I think butterfly. Uh, when you it get the rhythm the in, hardest. it's beautiful. When you get the rhythm of the butterfly, it's gorgeous. But after that, yeah. it is a, a my favorite long distance swim. I can't do the American crawl. It's really good, by the way. Yes, the American crawl just kills me. But when I was a Boy Scout, it's five miles. I was a side stroke, side stroker. That was my, that was my stroke. That was your stroke. I can do that forever. And your head is out of water, like completely. You know. Ryan. So it's an easy stroke for me. Or a lot of people like the backstroke. Or the backstroke? Yeah, some people like to do the breaststroke, but I find the backstroke is probably a little more restful. I can, and yeah. The, the butterfly t- takes a little more energy. Oh my God, this killer stroke. But like you're fine. You just if you're gotta adult, not get eaten before you get there. Yeah, if you're a doll, that works great. Mm-hmm. But I would tell us some. Get sure. that rhythm. I, I was like, I'd do it. I would do it. Okay. Give me the right charity. Okay. With the right dollar amount down, we have a deal. Yeah, you could probably swim. Hey, what if you could swim the Houston Channel? The ship channel. It's so dirty across. though. I don't think you could survive. So. I mean, I don't think. You could. I think be there are alligators cool. in the ship in our ship channel, so I don't know if I would try that. Oh, come on. alligators in the ship channel? Yes. Where did you figure that? They're in the ship channel because I've seen them. 
In the ship channel. In the ship channel. We have algas. Name name a spot. They like to lay on the side and then they find the little sandy area and they like sit in the sun. I mean, we're along the ship channel. I have to get a map and show you. It's a little complicated. Is it near Houston or is it near? Okay, alligators are really fast. They look really slow on land. They can travel real fast on land. Yes, they can. You cannot outrun them. So, like, in Texas, when you're going down to the beach in Galveston, yeah, um, all that inlet has alligators in it because a lot of, like, there's a lot of fish in there. So, you always got to be careful. But at the actual beach, there's very, like, rarely do you ever get an alligator. Uh, the alligators, they don't like salt water, do they? No, and the inlets are more fresh water because they've been Brackish, filtered. Yellow yeah. yeah. Okay. So, they like that part. But if you go over towards Louisiana and McFadden Beach and stuff, that's when you get a lot more alligators. And you see a lot more signs. So you can't just walk up to the water or let more, your dog run up to the water. Unless you want to partial to the speaking people. I guess they like the French more. They like being made into boots. Oh, God. That's <laughs> Texas. That's why they don't like it. Oh, Louisiana turns them into boots. It takes three alligators to make one good pair of boots. And when people say, yeah, so when people say, I don't believe in guns or gun, you know, whatever. Gun, I'm like, you have, don't live in Texas. You don't deal with rattlesnakes. Right? You don't deal with alligators. These are real things when it floods. Yeah, and let me tell you something. To to take out an alligator, there are some states that only allow you to do it with a bow and arrow. So you have to shoot a bow and arrow. Kink. That's kind of a painful way to die, though. Yes, but you have to be really good at it because if you're not good at it, you're just going to make it mad. And it'll kill you. And then it'll come for you. And, and if you're not 30 feet away, they run very fast. They look like they're so slow, but they're not. You they're have fast. to be much faster than that. You have to be further than Right. Well, yeah, but they tell you the safest distance is 30 feet. I'm just telling you because some people think that they can. Because you know, at the parks over here, there we have arboretums by the water. And so some people will just kind of walk right past them and not think anything of it. But, you know, you can't do that in Florida. Florida, you know, there's, you can Google it. Um, you just can't do that in Florida. They move fast. That's they true. move faster than you think they do. But remember that the little kid who was grabbed by an alligator? Yeah. And um, at the, was it a, it was at one of the amusement parks down in Florida. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And the thing is, they are incredibly fast. Well, it happened again to a woman that was doing someone's nails. She went to do a house call and she was working on this lady's nails on the patio. Um, and an alligator come, came to sun up by the patio, you know, getting the sunshine because they like to bake. Yeah. And the woman who owned the house said, you know, I think you should wait before you leave because last week that alligator took a deer into the pond or water or whatever it was and the woman the nail person waited and waited and i'm sure it was a couple hours and she got impatient she said you know i think i'm just gonna make a dash well she went to make that dash and so did the alligator and because it, 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 it grabs you by the legs and they drown you is what they do they don't necessarily chomp well they chomp you to grab you but they drown you is what they do so it, you know, it, it pulled her under and she and the husband had a shotgun and he was trying to you know, get the gator, but she stood up and she goes, I guess I'll really be going home now. And that was it. He took her after that. Cause they, you know, cause there could be more than one in the water. Cause in Florida, there's like a lot of, so long story short, don't walk up. Right to the water. Like, or with a lot of people. Or, yeah. <laughs> and if you see or, them sunning, just leave them alone. Walk about a block away from them. You never want to get their gator with this little mess. Oh Yeah. That's a mama bear thing, anyway. I think all things bears, you know. Mama bears, yeah. Ma- mama bears, no rattlesnakes, none of that. Okay, but well, now we know about those. Things. <laughs> okay, now. it's not as scary. So anyway, not to worry you about these things, because for we those of you that don't, all us out there. Talk, I'm really worried. So you really <laughs> enjoy this next little session. We're doing. Okay. Little mask. We're doing a little, yeah, yeah. A little sign language in here. No lemon grass. No lemon grass. So, um, talk there about some of the things team. that is there. What, so, what's worrying you at this time? Anybody? Anything? Well, let's see. Anything what's worrying you, Ryan? Come on up. How long is it going to be before we start opening up? Yeah, that was interesting about California, too. So, I, I was at, in San Francisco and South Salido and in Oakland and in South Salido. Like, such a pretty area, but only, like, maybe, I want to say, less than 10 stores were open on the Strip. 
but some of the restaurants were open on the water, two of them, and that was nice because you could sit out and have tea or whatever. It was really beautiful. But, um, you know, San Francisco is, other than the restaurants and, like, you know, the department stores like Target and those places, it was all just Starbucks was, I think, open for a drive through yeah, uh, my client yesterday said Los Angeles is closed down. He's getting ready to fly to Paris. And, um, you know, they're not crazy about having Americans right now. Oh, no, they're not. We're not infectious. They think we're disease carrier. It's just one American ever carried disease. An American? Um, should we go back? Yeah. We've been bad. Typhoid, Mary, okay, there's one right here. But they knew Hawthorne. It's oh, like, yeah. 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 Right, he was a plaguer. Mm hmm. Yeah. I went to his house, mm hmm. Salem, of course. I had to go to Salem during Halloween. I mean, who doesn't well, yeah, Halloween. Really, you went to Halloween? I went on Halloween. Did you, did you meet the little ladies there, the witches? Yes, I did. I met a lot of witches. I met did a they lot. You of mm -hmm. huh? No, but you know, we went, they, we went on this tour, this walking tour, and they took us to um, in front of the prison where they held everybody. Uh, during the witchcraft trials, and back then they made prisons weird, so like it would contort you because you could stand up, you have to bend over, or you'd be like this, and you'd be stuck like that for hours. And so I wouldn't set foot in the prison. I just don't do that kind of energy. But I stayed. I stayed on this line. This guy's like, I'm seeing little Chloe orb things, and I said, probably a couple of ghosts here. I'm sure. That could be. I said, but I was obsessed with finding the witch's tree, and I could not find it anywhere. Well, tell me about the witch's tree. So the witch's tree is where they hung all the witches back in the day oh, for the wow. trials. And um, the specific trials or other trials? Those specific trials. There's one particular tree. And I was looking for that tree because I wanted to do something to that tree. Maybe, but yeah, unfortunately, well, I could not. No. no, they said it was there, but I could not find it. And I think, yeah. well, one of the guys said that one, the witches put an invisibility something on it. Oh, yeah, right. And I was like, oh, we're talking like Harry Potter now. Yeah. So I was kind of fascinated, but I could never find it. So it was very cool. It's a great little like fun thing to do during Halloween. I'm just sure that they put some kind of something in there. Cookies, candies, treats. Like some people put potion in their alcohol at their bars. Yeah, thank you. And I won't mention any names. I'll put a little green stuff and beer on St. Patrick's Day. Oh, yes. Green stuff and beer. Green beer. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. So we worried about Halloween this year. Is that what we're talking about? Well, I think people we want to celebrate. You know? you know, when I swim, I don't worry. I just, I'm just in the flow. I'm also hypnotized to water. You're hypnotized to water. I'm hypnotized to water. What do you mean? So, um, after my car accident, so right during my car accident, a, a woman came up, probably like the weekend before I had done um, a hypnosis session, yeah. and the session was relaxed by water. So if I see water, smell oh. water, touch water, hear water, I mean immediately calm down oh. like it brings my nerves down okay. i'm i'm subconsciously hypnotized because and what worked perfect for this was right after my car accident yeah a woman because my hand was bleeding all over came and she opened her water bottle and she poured water on me and so when she poured the water on me my my i immediately began to calm down oh that's because i was really dizzy actually yeah yeah I can imagine. but anyway it's kind of cool but what are you worrying about? You're the one with mega business over here. Mega business, yeah. I think all <laughs> shop owners and small business owners are anyway in business really is concerned about how long the company can be shut down. Mm, yeah. You know, it's just like, Funny. how long can we go? How far can we go? And those kind of concerns. And as time goes by, because I think a lot of us kind of felt like, oh, yeah, by the time we get really into summer, we can't really. Going back to where we can start looking up our uh, comedy. In. So it seems to be going on longer and longer and longer. Financials. So, yeah, financially, how long can you go? Well, yeah, because a lot of people, like my friends in California, have been furloughed, so, which is basically like you're on unemployment. Right. Right. And I'm down to, I'm working one day a week. I'm working yeah. on Sunday, so I flew out of town and then came back Saturday night to work all day Sunday. Yeah. I end up having 19, 16 clients on Sunday. Oh, which is really busy. Overload. Yeah, for one day. That's really busy for me. So yeah. um, it's nice that I get to see people and stuff, but it would be kind of nice to have a little more broader 
like Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Tuesday, Thursday. I don't care. Weekends only. It doesn't matter. Yeah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but, but yeah, you're right. The economic piece of it for people, because a lot of people, you know, in California, different states are not all the unemployment stuff, the stimulus stuff that's run out. Yeah. And now they're hitting like, okay, what's going to happen now mode? Yes. You know? So, uh, yeah, so I think it's a big concern for a lot of people. All people worry about their jobs, worry about, okay, am I going to be going back to a job? Or what's going to happen? So there's just a lot of unknown, which brings up a lot of worry mm -hmm. and concerns. And so, yeah, it's doing all that. Well, and I think the other part is like, you know, when you're trapped in your house too long, you don't have connection with people. It can be, you know, that can worry. You worry about your family, you know, because I have friends that have parents that they can't see because their parents are immune compromised or vice versa. Oh, yeah. The children are immune compromised, you know, um, and that's a big deal for people. So that, you know, being disconnected from people that you care about can yeah. bring a lot of worry. Yeah. So we're going to work on a little bit about that today. Don't and, worry, work. Yeah, we're going to worry about okay. worry, work. Chris is good at this. And, is, and some people worry about, am I going to catch this or not? Oh. Am I going to be safe enough or not? Mm -hmm. You know, so. Yeah, some people are a little, I don't mean, some people are very yeah. overly cautious and I, I'm in that category. Yeah, if I go out, am I going to catch it? Mm -hmm. Do I have to stay inside and be safe? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think there's a lot of, a lot of concerns. And maybe all these little concerns end up being one big. Right, it can work. be a little too much. Yeah. So today we're going to work on some of that, of getting that out of our system. So the first tap we're going to do today, right. we're only going to do one, okay. is on worry. So I'm going to just tap the side. So as you guys know, if you've been with this before, we do EFT, which is um, created by Dr. Daniel Craig, is used in place of needles from acupuncture to acupuncture. And what it does is it helps remove stress and trauma out of the energy field. So we're going to do that with you today. So we're going to begin this way. The tabs go top of the head, over the eyebrow, side of the brow, under the eye, under the nose, at the chin, and then on the collarbone. And the other one is at the side. At the side, of, for women, it's the bra strap. For men, it's, it's the bra strap also. <laughs> for men, it's an inch below the nipple. Oh, Little bit of worry. Have all this worry. And all this stress. All this stress. Pertaining to COVID 19. Pertaining to COVID 19. And the extension of coronation. And the extension of coronation. Which seems to go on and on. And some of us are worried about our families. Some of us are worried about our friends. Worried about our friends. Some of us are worried about our finances. Some people's cats are worried. Some people are worried about their pets. Some people are worried about their pets. Some people are worried about their health. They're worried about their health. Some people are worried about just life in general. They're going to have enough money to general. pay their bills. Yes. Financial worry. Financial worry. Some of them are worried about their careers because they're trying to figure out what's next if we don't go back to work. Yeah. You know? And some people are the opposite. They're worried about balancing their home and their work life between their children. I have to work at home for the rest of my life. <laughs> yeah. Working at home can be kind of stressful too, especially if your kids are running around. But a lot of kids went back to school. That's good news. Okay. Right? So, That's why I was kidding about the cats because apparently there's some videos showing cats who get really freaked out because they're around all the time. <laughs> messing with their sense of how you know, to speak. Right. What are they doing here? What are the cats doing here? Now, what so, are the humans doing? All right. So we're just going to let go. Let go. We're going to let go of all that worry. All that worry. We're going to let go of all that stress. All that stress. We're going to let go of all that trauma. All the trauma. We're gonna let go. Okay, uh -huh. All the disappointment. All the disappointment. All the aggravation. All the aggravation. All the frustration. All the frustration. All the ways it might feel. All the way, yeah. That life might not be working out quite the way that we planned. Yeah. And the yeah. frustration that many people feel okay. over losing a lot of summer and their summer plans oh, God, and their vacations the the summer, the summer and their trips, you know? Yeah. What's next? The holidays are coming. Oh my God! How are, around the corner. how are we reinventing Halloween or Thanksgiving or Christmas? Christmas, holidays, how Monica, is, how is Santa? I mean, is Santa is he going to be new to this COVID? Yeah, thing? you know, Santa can't get sick. Is he, gonna, is he gonna get sick on his nightly run? No. Mm -hmm. We have all these right. So we have these worries about the future, but really, all we have is the present. Yeah.
Christmas is like Christmas time here. Yeah, so we're just gonna let go. We're let go of the presents. We're gonna let <laughs> we're gonna let go of all the stress. And all the worry. We're just gonna let it go. Now we're gonna take a deep breath. Ready? Close your eyes. Now we're gonna do is the gamut. So it's this little bone right here. Yes. Let me press into the um, you're gonna see me squish it. See my hand right here? I'm gonna squish it. We're gonna squish it the whole time. Uh -huh. We're gonna look straight ahead. You're not gonna move your head, you're just gonna move your eyes, okay? Okay. So I look straight ahead. Uh-huh. I look down and to the right. Down the right. I look straight ahead. Uh -huh. I look down and to the left. Down the left. I look straight ahead. Uh -huh. I roll my eyes all the way to the right. All the way to the right. Like I'm mad at somebody. Yeah. Look straight ahead, and then I roll them all the way to the left. All the way to the left. I look straight ahead. Straight I count to five. One, One two, two, three, three four, four, five, five. and I hum. Um, um, count to five. One, One two, two, three, three four, four, five. five. Um, um, okay. So now we're going to do the positive part of tapping. And it okay. looks like... I'm going to put it on Chris. Okay. Okay. Even though, Even though life is unpredictable, life. kind of look at the fact that our ancestors right. have survived many things. Survived many things. Part, of Part of survival is not worrying. It's not worrying. Having a little bit of faith. A little bit of faith. That everything I need. Everything I need in the moment. That I need it. I need it. Magically. Magically. My angels. My angels. My ancestors. My ancestors. And my gods. And my always meet my needs. Meet my needs. Today. Today. And always. And always. I'm just going to let go. I'm just going to let go. Of all the stress. All the stress. And I'm going to be present. Always present. In the moment. In the moment. And instead of worrying about the past. Instead of worrying about the past. Or living in the past. Living in the past. Or worrying about the future. Worrying about the future. I'm going to move ahead. Okay. And I'm going to be present. Be present. In this moment. In this moment. Today. Today. I'm going to live in this moment. In this moment. I'm going to enjoy this moment. Enjoy this moment. In this moment, I'm going to let go of all worry, all, worry. all stress. All stress. I'm just going to let it go. Let it go. I'm not going to hold on. Hold on. All that worry. All that worry. Or all that stress. All that. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. I claim my peace of mind. I claim my peace of mind. I claim my health. I claim my health. I claim that I operate. At an efficient level, a healthy way, fulfill the sole purpose, purpose. For which I have created. And I just let go. I just let go. All that worry. All that, all that worry. All that worry. And all that stress. That's true. Take a deep breath. Okay. So how tapping works is as you um, go to sleep at night, you will feel a little bit lighter when you wake up in the morning. It's like peeling off layers of an onion. Um, again, there are many great videos on YouTube that you can pull up at any given time. Suggestions that I give my clients are pull up the tabs. There are tabs on every subject. It's there, right? And so it's free. You can just access all of that on YouTube, which is something great about YouTube. The other thing is um, you can also full of free guided meditations in the evening when you're going to sleep or when you're taking a nap at night. That will help you. Are the ones on alligators? No, no not on alligators. Right. On happy thoughts when you go to sleep at night. You don't want to worry about any alligators. Oh, okay. So, gotcha. I, I so yeah, they have some really... Um, they have some. Sheep? No, I don't think there's any on sheep. Well, sheep are always considered to be bad. Electing the right president, there might be meditation on that. Oh, no, that's, just that's a good idea. The um, right right in. Okay. Yeah, right. The right right in. The mentoring candidate. Yeah. Anyway, so this is something that you can do to help work off some of that stress is do the guided meditations that 
you find on YouTube. There's also guided hypnosis. They come in 15, 20, 30 minute sessions. You do them when you go to sleep at night, turn them on for five minutes. If you have children, let them lay next to you or you can play them in the room for them. So they get kind of get used to the rhythm of what you're doing. And that will help you to kind of fill off some of the stress layers that you're carrying in your life right now during coronation. Okay. Okay. So now we're going to start with the art exercise. We're going to do the worry work. Oh. And you know who we're going to put to work, right? Of course. His name starts with the C. Yeah. It's with Chris Kringle. Chris Kringle. The, the Texas Chris Kringle. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to put Chris Kringle to work. Okay. Um, what we're going to do is we are going to draw. Ready? You're going to draw the shape of a potato. In any color you want, doesn't matter. Any color. So you're drawing your worry wart, is what you're doing. The worry wart potato? This is a worry, it's in the shape of a potato, but it stands right. Okay. Don't be worried. Right. Uh. So you're going to draw the shape of a potato. Okay. And now you're going to give your potato a personality. Oh. Okay. What does your worry wart look like? Do I have to draw it? Yeah. Huh. This is kind of fun. Chris is good with the monsters. I think he should carve pumpkins for Halloween. Yeah. There we go. Okay. So what we do is we're going to write. You can do whatever color you want. Okay. I do my worry boards in green. Because they remind me of slime from Nickelodeon. And so. Right. Good at this. He's a professional. He just doesn't want anybody to know. Yeah. So you're writing down your top five things that you're worried about right now. Good night to you. Yeah. Yeah. Talk to the guys. Oh, yeah. That was good. This is how it goes when you do live. So you write your top five things that you're most worried about. And you're drawing your worry wart potato. Alligator. Alligator on this list, really? It's just number five. Just number but five. You have brought the whole word in my life now. What's so good, sir? Now, like, <laughs> now, when you walk by the water, you're gonna be like, go "Dude, my nails are something." I'm just gonna burn. Not too coming in October. Well, it's not Halloween yet, but you know. Okay. Yeah. Instead of a worry work. Uh, uh, I'm a worry work. This is totally cool. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Uh, doesn't so, matter. Oh, okay. So, we cannot see where we Unless you like. 
Berapa tes? Okay. Okay, so we have financial. Work out who we might help. Concern with others help. Then others help. People are probably I care about whatever it is. You put alligators on there. Yeah. Sorry. 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 Yeah. So on the awards. So for every one of these that you do, you have to give it an next. You gotta draw what your, your you gotta draw what your financial award. What does your financial award look like? What does your alligator award look like? Like, if there's such a thing, is concerned about other people's health. What does that worry work look like? Gave it purple words. Oh, like a purple word. Okay. So on the next page, we're going to flip it. Purple people. This is purple people words. There's a lot going on. Okay. <laughs> you forgot that one. Words. It's like, where is, did you find your peace of mind? Where are the five things? Is two. When I do my meditations, a lot of times I'll focus on a beach. I was thinking I'll enjoy Yeah, I focus on the beach and I try to make it as real as I possibly can. Also, when you do that, it is like if you can really make it real, your intuitive ability. Sharpen. Uh -huh. the, the most basic ex exercise they give you is to practice with the rose. With the rose. With the rose, if you can make the rose real. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like Zen. So, yeah. and, and draw a picture of what that looks like. You're going to do the top five things. The top five things that you worry about to give that a place person, place, thing, whatever you want. Hey, Ashley. This is the Zen part. So work. you draw the top five things you're most worried about. And then on the second part, we are drawing um, your Zen, like the five place things you can do to maintain peace of mind. And what that looks like. Place you go to. Maybe it's a meditation space you go to. Maybe it's um, tea with a friend. So whatever your Zen space is. So you want to write the top five things you can do to maintain your peace of mind. And then you draw in what it looks like. Yeah, that's what I saw. Right. So that's his spot, his beach. I just like being near the water. Yeah, I love being near the water. I find it very relaxing. The waves just go for me. Yeah. I like you, I was saying that. I was in LA's people there. Oh, yeah. It's a nice time. Fall, winter, early spring. What's oh, COVID? This is his Zen space. That's his beach, so it kind of looks like that. So it tilts at an angle. Well, so what are your five things that you do to maintain your Zen? This is a very interesting music. Like mm. the music is playing right now. Yeah. Music is always a good outlet. Yeah, I like that. Talking about acid rock. Talking about calming. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah. And what else? Cisco Birds can get kind of carried away. Mm -hmm. It shifts you out of that because worries typically have to do with right building and um, you know, all that out of a mindset of it snowball by the evening news. Oh, not a bit. Number one, turn off the news. <laughs> turn off the news, period. I just watched the news like before, after lunch and before dinner. That's usually when I watch the news. Usually if you get 15 minutes of what you might be relatively good news, that's what mm -hmm. we need to know about today. Yeah. You know, quite easy. Otherwise, you keep your... Or they want to say things about you. You know what I mean? Like they want to instigate stuff. Yeah. And sometimes it's you just have to maintain your peace of mind and you go... And you take a break, you go park hop, you go to the beach, you hang out and bring your thermos and have coffee. And yeah, that's important. If you can be with people that lift your spirit or Zoom with people that lift your spirit, you know, that you find to be a source of encouragement. Yeah, that's an old piece of wisdom and actually is. Mm-hmm. The people you hang out with, one, yeah, one year. Yeah, because I think you. If you're around people who are real negative, mm -hmm. sorry, you just start dropping their states. So yeah, you have to just say, you know, I'm going to take a break, break here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because your circle of influence does impact, affect your life. You know, you're going to be like the you're going to become like the five people you spend the most time with. So if you're around really cynical, pessimistic people, you're most likely to be cynical and pessimistic. Yeah. You know, if, if you're not around people that are a little bit active and, and everyone from Tony Robbins to Les Brown. There's such a wealth of information right now, not to mention that you can like drown in all of the equal. And that way that kind of opens the world up for you in a way where you don't feel maybe so lonely, you know, or, you know, you don't feel overwhelmed. And art is a great outlet for that. There's a lot of mandalas um, off online that you can color in your free time if you just don't want to freestyle. There's a lot of really great little activities that you could do to kind of decompress and, and what's in our environment today and to try and find joy and something something pretty and beautiful about today. What's great about today? Well, I know someone whose birthday is today. And that, to me, makes the day special. You know? There's somebody's birthday. You get another sunrise and another sunset. You know, some people are not so make sure that you utilize your time, your art. You know, you can do little art projects like this. You can do them with children. You can do people, people you care about or with your own family. You know, it's easy for kids to draw a worry ward. They know what that is. <laughs> yep. They know when mom and dad are. Right. So art is a great way. And then, you know, go on the beach. Take them to the beach. Pack a picnic and go. It doesn't have to cost a lot of money. You know? That's it will take you in. Mm-hmm. Now, it's something to take you in the moment. Yeah. Do something sporty. Play a basketball game. Play a volleyball game. Yeah. There's so many different things. And oh, art is piano a great process. Piano. Yeah. It's fun. It gives your brain a break, but you got to shake up your routine a little bit. But it is possible, and I want you to stay hopeful, and I want you to stay together because a lot of us are going to come out of it. We just got to work together as a team, you know, and we have to try and stay optimistic for ourselves and the people around us so we're not like, you know, overwhelmed. Yeah. And physical exercise is important, you know, even if you just go walking around the block. I don't wear a mask when I walk outside, so in, you know, grocery stores. And stuff like that. Um, but, you know, walking, exercising, you know, up your little rubber tub, 
yeah. doing a salt bath, like whatever makes you feel better to bring a little bit of joy to your 